Hi, it's Ron Durant. We've come down to the Roaring Creek Trailhead of the Cumberland Trail State Park in Graysville, Tennessee. And today we're going to test out five different circular polarizers to see if the expensive ones are really worth the money or not. This is something I've always wondered about. Uh, I've had a lot of circular polarizers over my lifetime, and I really never noticed a whole lot of difference in most of them. There's been a few that I didn't care for, one of them being the B&Ws. They had a terrible, terrible color cast, and when you added an ND to it, it was even worse. We've had about two or three inches of rain in the last week, so the, the dried up waterfalls have come back alive. And yesterday, or not yesterday, a Friday, I was up at uh, Morgan County and those waterfalls were looking pretty good up there. So I traveled down to Ray County today and uh, to do this testing. It's cloudy, it's drilling, drizzling the rain. Today is December the 11th, 2022, and it's about 51 degrees. You couldn't ask for a more perfect morning to do this testing. Now all the filters I have are 82 millimeter. I bought the largest uh, size for my uh, largest lens, which is the 14 to 30 Z mount F4. And then I have adapter rig to adapt it down to the 77 millimeter size and the 72 millimeter size. And I can go a couple stuffs smaller than that, 67 and a 62 but I don't have any lenses that are that small. I just have uh, the 70 to 200, 2.8 is 77 millimeters, and the um, 24 to 70 is 72 millimeters. Now for the 24 to 70, I have a dedicated 72 millimeter thread circular polarizer, and I don't use that quite as often as the 14 to 30 and the 70 to 200. We're going to step over here and have a look at Roaring Creek. Wow, it's really pretty this morning. Yeah, that's just about really ideal flow. A lot of detail down in there. So the five circular polarizers that I have that we're going to test out today, I have 82 millimeter threads on all these. I have a Polar Pro. I have a Tiffin digital HT. I have a Nissi, which is part of the Nissi system, which comes with the square filter holders and all that. Um, that's probably the most expensive kit. I have the Blue Frog, same kind of system. It has a filter holder and takes square uh, filters with it. And then I have the magnetic case Wolverines. Those are the five circular polarizers I have with me. And we're gonna test all five of those in a similar environment. So you can get a pretty good comparison on tonal range and color cast and clarity. Those are the three things I look at when I buy a polarizer. And when we get done with the polarizer test, I'm gonna do a full out test on the Case uh, Wolverine magnetic filters. I have the circular polarizer, the six stop ND, the 10 stop ND, and we're gonna test out that whole system to see how it works. So here we are at uh, Roaring Creek again. We just stepped off the trail. And straight across over there is the outflow for another waterfall. Now, one thing you wanna pay attention to when you come on these trails for the Cumberland Trail, sometimes there's little social trails, and that's what we've got right here. There's a left-hand turn uh, social trail. It takes you down to the creek. It doesn't go very far, but sometimes they do. So what you need to pay attention for is the white metal blazes or uh, metal, little metal signs they have on the trees. Now this one is right here on this tree, but in the summertime, it can be obscured by this little tree in the front. So you need to kind of pay attention when you're going down these trails. Now if you were going back the other way, there's a white blaze just down the trail a little ways and you can see it plainly from here, even if the foliage was out.
So they put up a new sign down here at the trail intersection, and I'll show that to you right now. It's right behind me there, and it points you in the right direction for the Cumberland Trail. Now in the past, you would have to read the blazes on the tree. So if you can see behind me, I don't know if you can or not, there's a single blaze on that tree there. But over here is a double blaze. Let me show that to you. So you can see right here, they have two of them put together. Now, I believe, and I'm gonna check this out on, in the internet, but this indicates a directional change in the trail. So before, when you used to come down this trail, you'd come to this intersection and you had to read the blazes. Well, now they've got a really nice sign put up. So I got down here to the location and it started to rain. So I had to get my umbrella out to do this testing down here. It's about a mile and a half hike, so I'm gonna wait it out, and hopefully this rain will end just a little bit. Otherwise, I'll stay here with an umbrella and do the test. So I'm set up in the uh, spillway of the waterfall. It's really hard to see the waterfall today because it's just like a cascade with all this water today. But we're gonna use this as our test place to see what kind of shock we get with these circular polarizers. Like I said, we're going to test all five of them today and see how they do. So for today's test, um, I'm using the Z62 and the 14 to 30 F4 Z lens. Uh, I've got the Z lens set at 16 millimeters, and my exposure. I've done two different exposures with each filter. One was at normal, uh, no exposure compensation, at one second. The other was two thirds of a stop under at 1.6. So we'll compare those in the video now. One thing I like to say out here using these in the field, they're all just a little bit different. Of course, the two screw-in filters, they're pretty, pretty simple to put off and on. Uh, they take a little bit longer. The case being the easiest because it's magnetic. Uh, if I had to pick between the Nissi and the Blue Frog for ease of use, it would be the Nissi. And there's a lot of issues with turning the circular polarizer to dial it in with the Blue Frog that I wish they would change. The little wheels uh, on the ring are too small for your fingers, and you gotta use two fingers or, and uh, turn both wheels at the same time to help you out. Otherwise, we'll look at the color cast, the tonal differences, and which one's darker, which one does a better job, and if they're actually worth more money than the other. So in case you want to know the location today, this is called Polecat Falls, and it's really hard to see the waterfall today. It's, there's quite a bit of flow down here. I've seen it a lot, lot worse, and today it's not too bad. Might be able to work with this a little bit. I'm going to try to do some compositions in here. This is about three days after a three-inch rain. That stream a little bit, and I've seen this area right here that looked really interesting. So I decided to set up and take a couple shots here, and I'm set up using the uh, 14 to 30 lens for this little wide angle. And I'm going to underexpose it by two stops. So my exposure for this will be uh, one quarter second F16 at ISO 100. And I'm focusing on the nearest cascade right here. With F16, I should get enough depth of field. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Uh, I'll show that in the video now. I played around in this area for a while 
and came away with several compositions. This is one that I really liked a lot with the quarter second exposure. I decided to take a few compositions here. This one here is going to be uh, 1.6 and F16. Shooting everything at uh, ISO 100 today. I'd like to slow that down just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go to F11 for one quarter second. Yeah, that's better. You could actually go a little bit more. I'm going to go down to F8 and we're going to make this one at one sixth of a second. I'll show those three in the video now and you decide which one you think you like better. I believe I like the quarter second one better myself. They're all pretty nice. A lot of little features going on right here. Let me know in the comments which one you like better. Personally, I prefer the quarter second shot, which is this one right here. The other two are okay, but this is the one I favor. So this is the area I'm shooting at right here. I just thought I'd bring the camera over here so you can see it better. I moved upstream a little bit, found another composition I'm shooting. I'll turn this around so you can see it. This little area right here is what I'm talking about. And if you look right there, there's like little fingers of water coming off that rock. So I'm going to try a few different exposures here and see what I can bring out in this water and these rocks. And I really like the background up here. I think I can do something with that in post. And up there is Polecat Falls. You can hardly see it. So I've set up on this composition here. We're at the widest I can go, 14 millimeters. Uh, uh, one fifth of a stop at F8. I'll go ahead and take this shot now. It's about a third of a stop underexposed, but I like it a little dark, like I said. Oh yeah, that looks really good. Uh, we'll show that in the video now. This would have been my favorite composition of the day. I just love the texture in the water in this area. Normally, I would cross right here and go to the other side, but there's what, quite a bit of flow today, and I really don't feel like getting my feet all wet. Uh, I don't think the compositions are gonna be there. There's just a little bit too much flow on those waterfalls. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up on this side and have a look at Polecat Falls and see what it looks like from this side. Okay, I've come up here closer to Polecat Falls, which is right there. And most of the shots before this part of the video were done with the Polar Pro um, circular polarizer. I kind of favor that circular polarizer and I'll tell you why later. Now what I've done is switched over to the Case Wolverine and I'm starting off with the circular polarizer and I'm going to step my way right up through the 3 stop, 6 stop and the 10 stop neutral density filters on top of that. So we're going to take some photographs here right now and do some comparisons on those. So I just took a shot with the Case Wolverine filter, uh, the same settings as I used on the uh, Polar Pro circular. And I'm going to show those two images right now in the video. The first image was with the Polar Pro filter. And this second image was with the Case Circular Polarizer. The Case Polarizer let more light through. The other filters in the test seem to be darker. That part doesn't really matter. I just thought I would mention what I noticed. Yeah, it's kind of raining again, so I had to get the umbrella out. We got the uh, Case Wolverine. 10 stop on there currently. Uh, my calculator said it was 8 minutes 32 seconds, which in my head is 480 seconds. Well, one good thing about the Nikon Z62, it has extended shutter speeds on it. You can take it all the way up to 900 seconds. So I have set the camera at 480 seconds and pushed the trigger, and I'm just waiting for the camera to take the image now. I'm pretty impressed with the Case Wolverine filters. I just did a uh, a 10 stop on this waterfall and uh, 
I gotta turn my camera back on here. Excuse the nose hairs. Anyways, there's no color cast that I can tell on the 10 stop. The only thing is, yeah, there's no color cast at all. Uh, I'll show these in the video now. The first image was just the circular polarizer. I left the polarizer on and just applied the ND filters to continue on with the testing. I did not notice any appreciable um, color casting going on. There was no exposure settings changed on these. are all pretty much the same right out of the Lightroom catalog. The white balance was set in the camera for cloudy. So I left the circular polarizer on there to test the ND filter, so I'm pretty impressed with the Case Wolverine filters. Uh, I may have to start using those and just keep the Polar Pro for my backup. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of them. Just put them up in the closet, I guess. I don't need to carry them all with me. Like I said, I got five of them. Maybe six, seven, I don't know. Well, that's going to about do it down here at Polecat Falls, doing the circular polarizer test. It's been raining and drizzling all morning, had to get the umbrella out. So we're going to head back to the car now and get ready to go home. Well, it's going to wrap it up today for the circular polarizer test down at Polecat Falls at the Roaring Creek Trailhead of the Cumberland Trail in uh, Graysville, Tennessee. Boy, that's a mouthful. Anyways, if you like the, my content and you like my video, just give me a thumbs up, please. It helps me go a long way here with YouTube. Also, too, ah, somebody doing target practice. Also, too, if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the little bell there. You'll get notifications when I put out new videos. I try to do one every week, and I hope you enjoy what I do and find them useful. If you do, leave me a comment tell me what you like and if you don't leave me a comment tell me what you don't like i'm open to both of those okay thanks again and we'll see you next time bye bye okay what i wanted to do was tell you what i did not like about the blue frog circular polarizer and it has to do with the little uh, gear things, the little wheels you got to turn in order to turn the polarizer. Theirs is indented into the mounting ring, which makes it hard to get your finger in there. You almost got to use your fingernail to turn it. Um, I don't like that. It's, it's a little cumbersome to use in the field. But on the NISI system, they are sticks on the outside of the rim. So you can just get your finger out there and turn it like this. And it makes it a lot more easier to use in the field. If Blue Frog would just change their wheeled system, their geared system, just a little bit, they have a very nice filter and it's a lot more reasonable than the NISI system is to purchase.